in the hour. Maybe following a line is a fool. So you may realize that the people who are in the wrong path also may be very happy. A robber is very happy, a rapist is very happy. So happiness is subjective. You have to analyze what are the criteria of happiness in that article is important. So in that way they give the grading. But our criteria for happiness is the Quran. Quran and Sunnah. Earning is not the criteria, whether you're earning 1,000 rupees or 1 lakh rupees or 10 lakh rupees. Our criteria is that when we are doing something, we are pleasing Allah and His Rasul. Because we are looking for the final happiness, Akhira. But inshallah, yes, brother. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum as salam uh, wa I'm not making a criticism just for the clarification here. My question is a little bit long, okay, because I cannot cut it short. You must be remembering just five to seven years back, okay, you gave a talk on namaz in Sabu Siddiqui Engineering College ground. There were two questions posed. One question was, what is the difference between gymnastic and namaz? Uh, you gave some 10 points. Another prior question, in Indian culture, okay, which dress is preferable, especially for the namaz, kutta pajama, or topi, pants, shirt, tie, or coat? Uh, you gave uh, in a standard format your answer, but uh, you didn't differentiate the way you differentiated for the namaz and gymnastic. What I want to say, okay, uh, if you uh, take the kutta pajama and pants, shirt, and coat tie one side, the differences are, uh, the cost of kurta pajama cloth is less than the pants shirt and tie. Second thing, the stitching of kurta pajama is less than the pants shirt and coat tie. The washing soap consumption is less than the kurta pants and tie. A uh, drying time is less than the kurta pajama tie. And uh, the putting on time, uh, the dress, if you put on the kurta pajama, it takes 15 seconds, where pants shirt, tie, and coat, it takes five times. In five minutes, you can offer five rakat namaz, and on top of it, identity of the Muslim Indian culture is kurta pajama, and identity of the Christianity is uh, pant shirt and coat tie, and the lastly, if you are in pant and shirt and tie, if you are near to the pub, wine shop, or theater, you will be invited, where a person wearing kurta pajama and topi, he will be invited. Mother has asked a very good question. He said that he gave the talk on Sana and Sabu Siddiq. It's not Sabu Siddiq, it is Patkar Hall. <laughs> you show me the cassette, you show me the cassette where I spoke about gymnastic, etc. I will give you one lakh rupees. How much? One lakh rupees. It's in Patkar Hall. Accept it at least. No problem, but the question is the same. That doesn't mean your question is wrong. I'm just correcting it, because if I say yes, then tomorrow they'll ask me, please give me the color Sabu Siddiqui. Sabu Siddiq was Quran modern science. In Patkar Hall, it was Salah, the program into righteousness, and both these questions were there about gymnastics and Salah. So the brother said, when I compared gymnastics and Salah, I gave so many differences, which you are very happy, I believe. You agree with it, correct? MashaAllah. Why? Because it was on Islamic guidelines. Every Muslim will agree that Salah is more closer to Islam than gymnastics. Now, when it comes to kurta pajama and to shirt pant, opposing each other or coat and tie, I gave answer but didn't give the differences. Now, brother gave drying time is less, stitching time is less, etc. I immediately thought, why don't you wear a langot? <laughs> if you wear a langot, less cloth is required, less drying time, less stitching time. See, people are laughing. But immediately, they will say the answer is wrong. Why? Because langot is not Islamic dress. Correct? Now I was comparing Salah with Gymnastics. Salah is a fard. Gymnastic is optional. So when I'm comparing Gymnastics, which is not breaking any rules of the Sharia, becomes optional. If you do Gymnastics breaking rule of Sharia, that becomes haram. So when I'm comparing optional with fard, fard is always on top. Now here, I'm comparing two optional things, and I'll tell you why both optional. But not comparing your answer you gave, you know, drying time less, stitching time less, this, that, this. Langot will take your kurta pajama lock, talk, and barrel. But Langot is? Haram. Wearing only langot, huh? On langot, if you have kurta pajama shirt pant, it may become allowed. And we have got shirts which are transparent also. But if you do a survey, more number of kurta pajama will be transparent than shirt and pant, in percentage wise. I'm not saying all are transparent. So, it's breaking the rule of the Sharia. Yet, I cannot say kurta pajama is haram. People have a misconception, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, kurta pajama. It's not there in the Quran. It's not there in the Hadith also. Quran speaks about kameez in five places. Yusuf alayhi salam, Yusuf alayhi salam. Sorry Yusuf, 
when he ran and the shirt was torn from behind. It's kameez, it's not kurta. Find the kameez at that time, how it is, long, short, I don't know, but the word kameez, if you translate to English, it's not kurta, it is shirt. There's no hadith in which the Prophet wore kurta pajama. Prophet wore tob. So if you say tob is better, shirt and pant, I would say tob is better. It is sunnah, it's not far, but shirt and pant is also mubah. So because you are comparing kurta pajama, unfortunately you have been brainwashed living in India that kurta pajama is an Islam. Topi didn't come into the question. Topi wasn't asked also. I always give a talk that topi is sunnah. So don't get topi in between now. We have added. So etc. So I prefer my trousers than kurta pajama. There may be a problem. Medically I am a doctor. So each one has his, the way that he has been brought up. See many of the people, Arabs, in the country, they were tob. But when I meet them outside, I don't recognize them. Because they are in the suit. Because there they may feel fish out of water. So they can wear tob even in Bombay, in America. But when they go to Western countries, majority if not all, they wear shirt pant or they wear coat. They are not doing haram. Because they feel more comfortable in that outside. So here we read this is subjective, nothing with Islam. But tob surely has a better value in Islam. That's what the Prophet wore. As far as tie is concerned, I have told in my other lectures that wearing any clothes which is a sign of the other religion is haram. Many people have misconception that tie is a sign of Christianity which is not. Tie is not a sign of Christianity. I have read the Bible, nowhere does it say that tie is a sign of Christianity. Do you see the priest wearing tie in the church? What do they wear? What do they wear? Somewhat like tobe. That doesn't mean tobe becomes haram. Tie is not a sign of Christianity. In fact, a kurta, if you put on top, it looks like a cross. Yes or no? Yes, kurta. But I am not saying kurta is haram. Kurta you put on top, the shirt may not look like a cross. The kurta, because it is longer, it looks like a cross. It's not haram. So this is just some people against the Western world. They keep on saying anything against the Western world. You have to ask which verse of the Quran or the Hadith says tie is a sign of Christianity. Which verse of the Bible says, if you read the Encyclopedia Britannica, it is mentioned that this tie initially was used as a fashion in Croatia, as a tie. Then it became long, etc. It's a fashion. So you can follow any fashion, any culture, as long as it doesn't go against the Sharia. So if you go to Western world, wearing shorts is a fashion. I can't use that fashion. Why? Wearing shorts is haram in Islam. But coat and tie, because it doesn't go against the Sharia, I can wear it. It's not a fard, it's not a sunnah, it's mubah. Mubah is optional. Now whatever is mubah, if you make haram, there's a problem for you. The hadith says if you make anything halal into haram, then you see it is in the hell. So you can't make anything halal into haram. It is prohibited in the Quran and the hadith. You have to be careful. So if you understand, both are mubah. But if you follow, you have to follow all the six criteria. So tie, I personally don't wear tie. But when I go abroad, because it helps me to propagate and because it is mubah. If it helps me to propagate, if it is makhru or haram, I'll never do it, inshallah. If it is haram, I'll never do it. So here we realize what is mubah. If it helps you in propagation, no problem. But at the same time, if you see me, I always wear a cap. Anyone, even in the wildest dream, will not mistake me for a non-Muslim because of my beard and because of my cap. Fine? And my beard, mashallah, is more Islamic because even non-Muslims keep beard. Correct? Right or wrong? Correct. Correct. Ah, I was laughing, you understood. So this, no, 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 I'm not telling you. See, when you make a comparison, so you have, but at least keep a beard, alhamdulillah. Then you can say, okay, keep it into one fist and that is second, beard to rakho pehle, why? Alhamdulillah, get a sawab. Then you can talk about one fist or whatever it is. So here we realize that whatever you do, you should follow Quran and Sunnah. So your proof should be Quran and Sunnah, it should not be anything else. Now while convincing non-Muslims, that time I can use proofs which may not be Quran Sunnah, but the end result, because for me in Quran and Sunnah, Salah is more important than gymnastics, but for the non-Muslims, he will say, well, I am least bothered. So when I give an answer to a non-Muslim about gymnastics and Salah, I give him scientific reasons. In Islam, that is secondary, many other than others. Hope that answers the question.